I think it's time, really time, past due, to have the conversation that buying a house is not where it's at. Um, Gary Vee said this a few years, no, no, Gary Vee didn't say that a few years ago. He said, if you're having trouble with money, you don't have to own, you can rent. And real estate agents were completely up in arms because they said that he was hurting their livelihoods, which I don't doubt at all because people listen to him. He laughed it off, but people completely listened to him. I don't think that that was uh, an unfair thing to say, but people don't listen to me at all. So I'm going to say it <laughs> and maybe you'll hear it and it will benefit you. And that's great. But my intention is not to hurt any real estate agents, and I don't think that I will. So, <laughs> um, it, I, I don't think it's the case in a lot of cities in the U.S. A lot of cities, like, I even I know the city of Chicago, which I love, the city of Chicago. You can get a property for, I mean, a relatively reasonable amount from everything I see and I look it up fairly often it, it it seems completely within the realm of possibility to own in a beautiful city like Chicago so when I see these articles and things on the news about oh the American dream is now out of reach and people can't afford to own houses anywhere in the U.S. I mean I don't get that and please if you want to elaborate don't just tell me that it's the case but please elaborate as to why I would love to know, truly. But anyway, coming from, actually coming from Canada on a whole now, um, but especially if you live where I live in Toronto, if you live in Vancouver, now more so if you live, when I lived in Alberta, it was much more reasonably, reasonably priced, but then just as I was leaving, the prices shot through the roof, like, a lot of places in Canada now are not affordable. So that's the place that I will come from. Um, people talk so much about the cost of living now and it's going up. I think in a lot of countries in Europe, they, they laugh at us, like us complaining about food prices, us complaining about a lot of things because there they've been through the roof for years. And I know I've talked to people from different European countries that have come here and they are so excited to get groceries here because they can just get like junk foods and stuff because it's so much cheaper than countries in Europe. So I'd also love to hear from you about that if you have information about Europe versus Canada, the US, whatever. But when I started looking, being at that age to look for a house the prices were steadily increasing and I never would have dreamed that they would be where they are now like when I got home over 10 years ago and you know a nice size house like 2,500 3,000 square feet was now like six hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand dollars and as a kid it was one or two hundred thousand dollars and I couldn't believe it but now that same house is over a million, a million, 1.1, 1.3. And it's just, I just can't believe where it's at. That being said, so many people, in fact, the majority of people, apparently, again, I'm not sure now if I want to believe numbers because it, I don't know, it doesn't ring true to me, but 70% of adult Canadians and and Ontarians, I believe it said, are homeowners, 70%. So it's still certainly the majority. But then on the other hand, you, you see the t statistics that millennials can no longer afford home ownership. So I don't know, there's a bunch of information thrown out there. But just coming from this personal perspective of mine, I could not be happier 
as someone who thought it was an absolute that I would grow up and have a certain kind of job and own a house and have kids and have a husband. And luckily, I say luckily, completely um, in earnest, <laughs> like I didn't buy a house. And, I, and, and even like several years ago, I knew it was a stretch. I knew it would be such a stretch to do so, but had to do it. You had to do it. That's what you have to do is you have to buy a house. And so I wanted to make this video just to say to you, even if you're, you know, I know people who are lawyers, newscasters, they don't buy a house. Some of them still live with their parents just because it's a better financial option or they don't feel that they can live uh, renting. And I mean, if you look at rents like $2,500, $3,000, $3,500 for a one bedroom, that's for renting. And then you look at owning and it's the same or in many cases, a lot more than that. Why would you do that? Why would you, why would you own? And you would say, duh, no shit, because after you've owned, you pay it off, and then you'll be living for free. No, you won't. You won't be living for free. If you own a house, first of all, you'll be putting $150,000 down to come out with a mortgage that's anywhere close to doable, reasonable, manageable. And then you'll pay that three, four, five, six thousand dollars a month for your mortgage, insurance, expenses, taxes for 25, 30 years. You'll have to put in lots of money to the house when anything goes wrong. The roof, the floor, a leaky dishwasher that threatens the floor, you know, aluminum wiring exploding in the walls, uh, new central air. I mean, your basic cleaning, the, the costs are, are through the roof, outdoor maintenance. So you have to pay all of those costs. So you'll have spent all that money after 25, 30 years, which I've done this kind of math, like a million dollar house, I think that you, you put in like $1.5 million versus if you just rented for that entire 25, 30 year period, I think it was $750,000 that you'd be spending. And then you go on just to continue spending into the rent. But then if you owned, you would have spent $1.5 million total. And then you'll go on to keep spending because you keep having to pay for the taxes, any maintenance, um, your utilities, which, you know, people have said is the cost of a mortgage, your, your, your central air in some places, in some places is, a, is an absolute fortune. So again, from my perspective, I think that when you look at happiness, people want to know where happiness went. People want to know where our communities went. People want to know what happened to all that i think that what people need to start looking at again or just at all is keep your expenses as low as possible rent if you feel okay with it if you feel like you're going to get ahead rent with other people with other couples I know people that are in their late 20s, early 30s that rent a split bedroom, which I think is completely fucking wrong that landlords are able to do that. That's not okay. But people that are doing that and then they are able to afford having a life on top of that. Again, I, I don't agree that that's happening at all. It's not. Okay, but in their case, their costs are low. Er, they've met people, they've met friends. You know, they've they've learned kind of how to budget their money better. They've grown their their savings, whatever the case may be. 
but um I think that life needs to be prioritized again people don't want to give up the home ownership having a car things that are huge expenses that even people families that make 200k you know are are having difficulty with because there's so much if you make 200k as a family then that net is $10,000 a month if you're spending $5,000 of it on a mortgage and you know 200k you're you're i think certainly in the top 1% if you're making 200k as a family so i think that costs of living are high costs of food and things that we have to buy are high they've gone up but we do have options to give things up or lower our costs or keep our costs low and people just don't want to look at that having a house has become a must a mortgage has become a must having a car to so many has certainly become a must living in the suburbs is a must and that way of thinking it just might not be sustainable it just might not be a good choice for you to live a happy life complaining about the costs of of living of having a mortgage of this and that doesn't it doesn't mean they're going to come down so it might be a decision to make different decisions it's the best decision that was kind of an accident that i've made is just keeping costs very very low because even keeping costs very very low it's still a challenge it's still a challenge and even in keeping costs very very low big things can come up in life that you will struggle or can't pay for like an illness and an illness people get cancer and i've had that in my family the cost financial emotional everything of someone having cancer these things happen these things are not rare occurrences these things happen all the time so if you have not kept your costs very low you're putting yourself in a position where the stress in your life just might be unbearable even just with the regular stuff but alone if the bigger bad badder stuff happens so i just wanted to come on here today and talk about that and talk about some people say to me too like in indirectly say to me you know like like oh your life is sad like you know you don't have a house and and you, you don't have a car and you like so your life is sad again they say it very indirectly they don't use those words but i can tell that that's what they're saying to me i'm like no like i can like not having those things has been the best decision ever the biggest freedom ever growing up you know people had houses and it seemed to be more from what i could tell from what you know normal people can do and now it's just not an affordable option and i could not be happier i am saying thank you every day that that is not where i i ended up not to say I won't end up with a house but that I'm not there now like with all you know the stuff that's happened and happens in life all the expenses like oh my god I'm so so grateful and I get to you know it's it's still expensive it's not like I easily afford it especially with the cost of olive oil but you know I can still get healthy groceries you know do all that stuff nutritionally that i feel like i need to do get supplements 
all that stuff I feel like is very, very important. And yeah, I've never had a car always locked and or just paid for transit. And don't get takeout really ever. Don't pay for a mortgage. It's just, it's just the, yeah, the best happy, happy accident ever. So I just wanted to share that with you today. Just something for you to think about. Not the real estate agents but the other people who might benefit from this. And this is Cast Contents. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I'm trying really hard not to smile because I have stuff in my teeth again. And I didn't want to start the video with that again. I'm saying it now for a second, but that is why. Because, of course, right before I shot this, I had a huge bowl of pasta. I will see you next time.